Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I am in the Seattle area visiting friends and family and this is our rental car. This is a 2022, I know the title says 23, but this is a 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan. Excuse the wind noise, it's a little windy out here. Uh, so I want to do a review of this car, just kind of show you guys what it's all about and compare it to my Volkswagen Golf. So if you guys are into uh, GTIs or uh, Golf R's and stuff, this SUV is on a similar platform. Uh, not the exact same but similar and uh, so we can kind of see if this is like the family man's golf so let's go ahead and check it out it has been a little rainy out today but we have a little glimpse of sunlight here let's go ahead and start here in the front so these are led projector style headlights i have driven this car at night and they light up the street pretty well looks like the turn signal bulbs are just standard no fog lights or anything like that but it does have front parking sensors so that's pretty nice. This model is called the SE trim. Has these 18 inch tires. Has a little design right here, which is pretty cool. Does have an LED turn signal on the mirror. This vehicle does have smart key access or keyless access, whatever Volkswagen calls it. Now Tiguan's are actually three row SUVs, believe it or not. So that's pretty uh, surprising because this is kind of like the same size as an Escape, but maybe it's a little bigger. And you can see that rear door is pretty long there. Looking at the rear, we have uh, just standard bulbs for the taillights. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of fancy lighting back here. And one thing that's really strange is that it has front parking sensors, but it doesn't have rear parking sensors. You can see there's no rear parking sensors. But it does have a backup camera that's under here. But from a design standpoint, oh yeah, and this already came on the car. This was kind of, someone must have beat it up before us, I don't know. But from a design standpoint, it's not really the most exciting looking vehicle in the world, but for 2022, they did update the front end, so it does look a lot better than the previous gen. You can see it kind of has like the little bottom part that comes up like that, which is kind of like a Golf R, sort of. I know it's kind of weird comparing this to a Golf R, but um, that does kind of remind me of a Golf R as far as that's concerned. Open it up here. Look at the door panel. You have a soft touch material up here. Uh, you have like a leatherette material right here. Here's all your window controls, all that good stuff. There is a nice little storage pocket on the door here with lined with felt, so that's pretty nice. Obviously we're here in the Pacific Northwest, so there's a bunch of pine needles and uh, dirt on the floor mats there. It does have a powered driver seat, and these seats are leatherette. So they're kind of like leather, but not really leather. They're like a vinyl. Really easy to clean, it just doesn't feel as nice and you know, as normal leather, but that's okay. Let's go and start it up. Like I said, this is the SE trim, so it's not like a super high trim, because you can get an SEL, you can get an SER line, um, so you can get some uh, higher trims in this one. So starting off the steering wheel, this is very similar to my Golf, actually. Uh, it does have kind of like a little bit of a flat bottom here, but one thing I do notice that kind of sucks is the material. So it's a lot better than like a plastic steering wheel, but this material is like, I don't know, it feels really fake and cheesy. My uh, GTI steering wheel is really nice. It's like a nice uh, uh, high quality leather. This one, not, not so much. It does have actual buttons for the steering wheel controls. So some people might actually think that's uh, better having uh, the buttons. Uh, I think the buttons are fine. The touch buttons are fine too. I don't really mind. But if they made it look like this, I mean, I think that's fine as well. Looking at the gauges here, it does have a digital display in the middle. I believe it's eight inches and you can actually uh, reprogram the way it looks here so you can go through like different uh, little settings there I kept it on this one because I like seeing the tachometer you can also go through like different uh, different settings here as well but let's just go back to um, speed here so where is it there it is there we go looking over here on the right side this is for your windshield washer controls it does have uh, automatic wipers so that's pretty nice you got your turn signal and stuff over here. You press the end, it pulls up all the driver assist tech. It does have lane assist, adaptive cruise control. So that's pretty cool, front assist. Looking at the middle here, um, this is really easy to use. These buttons on the side are touch sensitive. I mean, if it was just a standard button, I mean, I guess it'd be a little bit better, but um, I don't really mind the touch sensitive that much. It's not a big deal. Um, I do like the way my GTI's infotainment is a little bit better um, than this one. But you have your different little settings there, the car settings, sound settings, all that stuff. It's pretty easy. You do have a physical volume and tune knob. Down below here, you do have climate controls. 
So it's like a touch sensitive, so you can kind of scroll up and down. If you hold the up, it'll go to high. If you hold the down, it'll go to low. So that's pretty cool. I'll kind of keep it in the middle here. Heated seats for the driver and passenger, so that's a pretty premium touch there. One thing I'm not a big fan of is all this, uh, all these blank buttons here. Now, I don't even know if the fully loaded Tiguan's have like all these taken up, but I don't know, I feel like that looks kind of cheap having all these like blank buttons here. But that's that. We do have a McDonald's come standard with every Tiguan. I'm just kidding. Over here we have our center console, it's okay. Decent storage, Let's see the glove box. Okay, I don't know what this is all about right here. It's overall a pretty nice interior. Um, it's not particularly exciting or anything like that, but I guess it does feel somewhat premium for the price tag of this vehicle. This one is roughly around like the low 30s. So it's around the same price as like a base GTI. Um, but obviously the GTI feels a lot nicer, but this is an SUV, so this is a lot more usable. Um, up here we have our auto dimming rear view mirror. This is an option with the garage door openers at the bottom. This one does have the panoramic sunroof option, so there's all your controls right there. It does have LED interior lighting, so that's nice. And this really cool panoramic sunroof. I mean, I'm not a fan of sunroofs, but I mean, if it doesn't take away from the headroom that much, I guess I don't mind it. But we are in an SUV, so let's go ahead and check out the back seat. So if you guys have some kids, you can see kind of how they uh, they fit in this vehicle. All right, guys, looking at the back seat here, this door is pretty long because all Tiguans have the long wheelbase now. Don't mind the beeping up there. I have the key in my pocket. You have a nice uh, vinyl back here as well. It is hard touch up here, just like my GTI. So you get soft touch in the front, but it's hard touch back here. You have a nice little speaker there. These seats look really basic. Obviously the, the leatherette material. You do have a full down center armrest right here. No pass through or anything like that because it does have a third row, believe it or not. And then you have only one USB-C, which is kind of strange, a 12 volt. And then you have uh, the air vents back here, but no rear climb controls or anything like that. But it is nice that they gave you the air vents. You do have a pocket on the back of both seats, but I'm gonna go ahead and hop on the passenger side there so you guys can see how someone that's 6'5 fits in the back of a Tiguan. All right, guys, let's go ahead and step in here. I have the seat adjusted up front to be comfortable for someone like me. Now, it's not all the way back. Full disclosure, it's not all the way back. But I have it up front where I can still fit. So you can see my legs do kind of touch the back of the seat, but I'm awkwardly tall. Leg room is decent. It's definitely not bad. And then it's nice having the center armrest right there. You can see the nice panoramic sunroof a lot easier from the back here. You can see the interior right here. Pretty nice interior. And then you got LED lighting as well. But overall, not too bad. Let's go ahead and check out the third row. It's very small, so it's like, you can only use it in a pinch, but I guess that's what it's for. So let's go and check it out. You pull this and then you can just slide it forward. See, very easy. So I'm gonna attempt to get back here. I did fold one of the seats up so I can give you guys this demonstration. So let's go ahead and see if I can fit in the back. So actually getting in the back isn't that bad, but since the seat is so low to the ground, uh, my knees are like in my chest. But I mean, a six foot five person sitting in a third row of a Tiguan probably isn't ideal, but I guess it would work for children and it is somewhat easy to get in and out of it surprisingly. But you can see here, we can kind of look at the cargo space back here. We have the third row right here. You can fold them down to have more space. So not too bad, but let's go ahead and check out the trunk. All right, guys, to open the trunk, you just open it up. There's no power or anything like that. I'm sure on the higher trims, you can probably get a power lift gate. You can see here with the third row up, you only have this amount of room right here. So not a lot, but if you put the third row down, you can see obviously there's a lot more room. So the third row down, this SUV has lots of room and the third row seats do have a cup holder and a little bit of a storage area back here. All right guys, just pop the hood here. It does have a hydraulic hood strut, so that's really nice. Even my Mark 8 GTI doesn't even have a hydraulic hood strut. But this is the 2.0 four cylinder. It is the EA 888 Gen 3 B engine, if that makes any sense. So it's 184 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque. My GTI has the EA 888 Gen 4 engine and that one has 241 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. So obviously this is detuned, it's an SUV, not a sports car, but the GTI engine is much better. The MPG on this is about 23 city, 30 highway-ish with the front wheel drive like this one. And it's hooked up to a regular eight-speed automatic, not a 
DSG transmission like the Volkswagen GTI. All right guys, now let's take this Volkswagen Tiguan for a spin and see how it drives. Guys, right off the bat, one thing I noticed that's kind of strange is when you let off the gas and drive, or excuse me, let off the brake and drive, the revs will automatically raise up. So I guess that's kind of cool, but at the same time, it makes you kind of go a little faster than you expect. So let me show you. I'm gonna let off the brake and watch the, the revs go up there. See the revs go up, come to a stop, go to like 750, let go of the brake, revs go up. And the same thing happens in reverse. So that's just a little strange, took some getting used to. There's a steering feel, there is none. Um, there's no sort of steering feel in this vehicle. Obviously it's not a sports car. It's just a light, easy to drive uh, vehicle. So setting off, one thing I noticed immediately is the throttle response is bad, like very bad. But once you get past a certain point, then it like takes off. So in a, in a way, it's actually kind of hard to be smooth with the throttle because you can go like this, you can go like this, nothing happens. But if you go like this and hold it there, then it'll like, vroom, it'll like take off. Like I said earlier, it does have a normal eight speed automatic. So it's not as uh, direct as the DSG, obviously. But this one is very smooth for the most part. It does have a, some weird hard shifts now and then, but it's pretty smooth for the most part. As far as performance is concerned, it's not like a super fast shifting transmission or anything like that. Here in uh, the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of terrain, so there's a lot of hills and stuff over here. But the ride is really good. We've been driving it for like a week now, and the ride is really good. Um, you know, it's not like a sporty ride, but it's a comfortable ride, which is what matters in an SUV like this. It's really easy to park and maneuver despite being a three row SUV. So I do like that part about it. And one thing also I notice is it tends to burn out really, really easily with front wheel drive. Now I get it, the roads are wet right now, but it burns out like too easy with the front wheel drive. So maybe the four motion would be the better option to go with. Um, now, as far as this power and speed is concerned, I don't really have a lot of room over here to do anything, but we can try a little acceleration test here. So it, you know, it gets up and goes okay. Now when you're on the highway, it doesn't like accelerate that quick, but as far as like getting around town and stuff like that, the acceleration is just fine, you know, for an SUV. It's not sporty like the GTI by any means, but it's good for an SUV. The backup camera is really easy to use. Um, now, I will say a few things in my uh, week of driving this vehicle. The auto start stop is very clunky. So when it turns off and it turns back on, the car kind of lurches forward and it's really uh, unnatural feeling. So I would recommend turning it off with this button here. When you're in drive and you want to go to park, it's really easy to accidentally like put it to the side like that. This is the manual mode, by the way. So to put it in park, sometimes I go like this and then I get stuck. So that's kind of annoying as well. Electronic parking brake. And then just like my GTI, the, the quality of the carpet is horrible. It's like uh, Velcro. So if it gets dirty, it's gonna be really hard to clean. But same goes for the GTI. But to answer the video's question, is a Tiguan kind of like a SUV GTI? Definitely not. The GTI feels so much more premium, so much nicer, so much better to drive in every single aspect. But if you are looking for like a three row SUV, this is a decent option. Uh, it's definitely not bad at all. It does have a lot of nice features, but it's definitely not an exciting uh, driving experience whatsoever. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.